Hi everybody and welcome back. Yesterday we were kind of focused on looking at graphically how we can analyze continuity. This video is going to be all about analyzing continuity algebraically. So how do we actually use algebra to figure out whether graphs are continuous or not when we don't have a graph to look at? So a function is going to be continuous if the following three things match. If the limit as x approaches your specific number from the left is equal to the limit as x approaches your specific number from the right which has to be equal to your actual function y value at that point. Now the only time we don't need to check all of these is we don't need to check both sides when looking at the endpoints. For example, if I wanted to know if this graph was continuous at this point, I wouldn't check the limit from the left and from the right because the limit from the left doesn't exist. There is no graph over there. So I wouldn't need the limit from the left at that endpoint. I would only need the right-sided limit and vice versa for the other endpoint. I would only check the side that it's connected to the graph. So going back to what we talked about yesterday with different types of discontinuities. A jump discontinuity, we could say there's a discontinuity here because the limit as x approaches c from the left does not equal the limit as x approaches c from the right. Now it does equal f of c, so we can't include that kind of third component there. We can't say which does not equal f of c because um, it does equal f of c on the left side. That's where the closed circle is. It's just that the two sides don't match. Now when we have an infinite discontinuity, there are two situations. Close to that asymptote, but the graph can both go the same direction, like a volcano, or the graph can go opposite directions, like a 1 over x, or I sometimes call it the kung fu function. So if it's like a volcano, then one of the things we could say to justify our answer here is that the limit as x approaches, in this case it looks like that's close to the number 2, does not equal the function value. Oh, two. Now I can use a two-sided limit here because the two sides do match. So I don't need to write them out separately as a left and a right-sided limit. The two sides match. They're both going to infinity. But they don't equal the actual function value because there is no closed circle for me to look at. Now on this example, I wouldn't be able to write it that way anymore because in this example, the two sides close to this limit, close to this asymptote, do not match. So here, I would be able to say that the limit as x approaches 1 from the left does not equal the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. Which also does not equal the function value because there is no closed circle somewhere. A removable discontinuity like a whole, the two sides of the limit do match. So once again I could say that the limit as x approaches c and use a two-sided limit there does not equal the actual function value. The closed circle is somewhere else. And finally, for an oscillating discontinuity, we say that the two sides of the limit don't match. They never quite agree on if you're at the top of the mountain or the bottom of the valley. So here we would say that the limit as x approaches, it looks like in this case that's happening at 0, from the left does not equal the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. So what kind of problems could you possibly see? 
Well, what we're going to need to do is look at the equations that we're given and the types of functions we have and identify the possible problem areas where we might have an issue with continuity. If you have a rational function, which means it looks like a fraction, then you're going to want to check for infinite discontinuities, which are just vertical asymptotes, and removable discontinuities, which are holes. So step one here for me would be to factor. Now if I factor this, I have x plus 2 divided by, the denominator would factor to x plus 2 times x minus 2. That tells me that the x plus 2's cancel. As soon as you see that those cancel, it tells you that there's a hole. So I would have an, a discontinuity at x equals negative 2, and it would be a removable discontinuity. Now if I see that this part of the denominator did not cancel, that's what tells me that that's an asymptote. So I would say that at x equals 2, there's an infinite discontinuity. If you're looking at a piecewise function, for a piecewise function, you're going to want to check for jumps, discontinuities, and removable or whole discontinuities. The two pieces don't connect. So here's what I would do. I know that my connection point is when x is 2. If I take 2 and I plug it into the top function, my answer is 1. If I take 2 and I plug it into the bottom function, my answer is 2. Because I get two different y values that are not equal, it tells me I have a jump discontinuity at x equals 2. Because one side of the graph connects to the number 1 for the y value, and the other side of the graph connects to the number 2 for the y value. Now here's what we're going to do next. I'm going to give you a function. You're going to tell me where the potential discontinuities are. So if there's going to be a discontinuity, where is that going to happen? And then we're going to use algebraic analysis to justify whether it actually, and determine whether it actually happens or not. So in this first problem, I'm noticing it's a rational function. So I'm going to take my denominator, and I'm going to make it equal to 0 which means I get x equals negative 2. And that's going to tell me that there's a potential discontinuity at x equals negative 2 because there might be an asymptote there. To determine whether that actually happens or not, we're going to check three things. We're going to check the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left. We're going to check the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right. And we're going to check f of negative 2. Now think about this as like an equation. If all three pieces of this equation end up giving me the same answer, then I'm continuous. If I end up getting different answers, then I'm not continuous. So I'm going to check what happens close to negative 2 from the left. Now from the left, if I think about a number line, If I'm a little bit to the left of negative 2, that's like negative 2.1. If I plug in negative 2.1, on the top of this fraction, I'm going to get a positive number. And on the bottom, I'm going to get a very small negative number. Because negative 2.1 times 2 is negative 4.1, which when I add 4 gives me negative 0.1, so it's very small. If I divide by a very small number, so if I have one pizza and I need to share it with only a few friends, everybody gets a lot of pizza. So the answer here would be negative infinity because a positive divided by a negative is negative and I'm dividing by a very small number. Now I'm going to choose a number a little bit to the right of negative 2. A little bit to the right would be like negative 1.9. 
On the top, negative 1.9 times negative 1.9 is going to give me a positive number. And on the bottom, I'm going to have negative 1.9 times 2, which is like negative 3.8 plus 4, which gives me a very small positive number. Now a positive divided by a positive is still positive, but since I'm dividing by a very small number, I get a very large answer, like infinity. I only have to share with one friend, we all get a lot of pizza. Finally, f of negative 2. Because I can't actually plug in negative 2 here, this value would be does not exist. I can't actually use negative 2, it gives me a 0 in the denominator. So because of that, these three answers are not the same, which means there really is a discontinuity at that, va at that um, x value. In the next problem, I'm going to know that my potential discontinuity is wherever this graph potentially is disconnected. So I'm going to say at x equals 0. And I'm worried about a jump discontinuity there. So once again, I'm going to look at three pieces. The limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x. I'm going to look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x. And I'm going to look at f of 0. If these three pieces all match, then I'm continuous. But if my pieces don't match, then I have a discontinuity. So for this one, we can officially say that it's discontinuous. Because these three pieces don't match. Now, let's take a look here. If I want to know what's happening close to 0 from the left, I'm going to use the top function. So if I plug 0 into the top function, I'm going to have 0 minus 7 over 2. So my answer is going to be negative 7 over 2. If I want to know what's happening close to 0 from the right, I'm going to plug 0 into the bottom function. 0 squared is 0, plus 2 times 0 is 0, so I'm just going to get negative 2. And if I want to know what's happening directly at 0, I'm going to use the function where I'm equal, which is the top function again. So I'm going to get negative 7 over 2 again. Now because these three answers are not the same, I would say that there is a discontinuity at x equals 0, and that there would be a jump there. Finally, for the last question here, I'm worried about there being a discontinuity at x equals negative 3. And I'm worried about it being either an asymptote or a whole, depending on whether I think it's going to cancel and factor or not. Now if I do simplify this function, I've got that negative at the beginning, the top factors to x minus 4 times x plus 3 over x plus 3. So the x plus 3's do cancel. So now I'm mostly just worried about it being a hole in the graph because the x plus 3's did cancel. Again, to justify this with algebra, I'm going to have to show my work. So I need to use the technical definition, which is that the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left has to equal the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right, which has to equal f of negative 3. Now if I'm evaluating the left and the right, I'm just going to use this simplified function. So if I plug negative 3 into there, negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7, times this negative would be positive 7. If I plug negative 3 into the same function again, again I would get 7. But the actual function value at negative 3, I would have to use the original. And since I can't plug negative 3 into there, the answer would be does not exist. So because these three pieces do not match, I would say that there is a discontinuity at x equals negative 3. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you tomorrow for some practice. Have a great afternoon.